With me in the studio now is Enja Ayuk. He's the CEO of Centurion. That's a company that advises OPEC uh, companies, and uh, OPEC and oil companies. Uh, Enja, how has Corona affected the oil market? Thank you for having me. Corona has really affected the oil market where there's been a slowing demand and you're really seeing big issue. Prices have gone down. And let's say you were somewhere around, hovering around 60. Right now, it's already around 50. And you're really seeing the market going crazy with what is going on with the coronavirus because there's very slow in demand, there's slow in jet fuel demand. Mm. And so it's really, really sending the market into crisis right now. A big chunk of that slowdown in demand comes from China. Is, it, is that the main driver, China not needing so much oil at the moment? It's one, it's one, of, it's one of many. I mean, you, you have right now a lot of industrial bases around India, around Europe, around the United States that people cannot get together. You have a lot of people staying home from, from big gatherings. So you're going to see a big, big, a further decline, especially with jet fuel, especially with industrialization and manufacturing plants. So it's not just China. China is part of it, but it's going to be bigger. And it's right now, it's even bigger than China. And that's what, it, that's what calls for a global concern on the coronavirus, especially with oil prices and the oil markets. Uh, what can we expect from that Vienna meeting tomorrow? OPEC is always a great place to be when with the negotiations and the back and forth that happens. Right now you have this big, um, this big tent with OPEC Plus. So it's going to, you're going to have to ask a big question. Do we go on a three to 500,000 cut to really make sure that you stabilize the market so that consumers and producers can both live with? Do you, are you going to work on the supply glut? That is what's going to happen. So you're going to see who wants a cut, who doesn't want a cut. But this Big Ten with Russia included really gives a chance that consumers can really feel, not continue to feel the pinch, but also producers can feel that they can stabilize and grow the market. So who will be for a production cut and, and, and who will be against it and why? It, 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 it really depends because, you know, right now you already have a lot of production of the market. 800,000 barrels out of Libya, escalating sanctions against Venezuela. That's a lot of oil that's already out of the market. So you left to be seen how Saudi Arabia, which is one of the biggest producers, together with Russia, how they can how how they can come together. I think there is right now a growing dynamic where the Russians don't really want to push for a cut, but they are going to have to in order to stabilize the market. And the Saudis are always open to seeing to having all this discussion. Most African states are small and some of the non-OPEC states would have to also share in the pain to make sure that the, yes, we all stabilize the market. Andrew Ayuk, thank you very much for thank this. Thank you so much. Very interesting analysis. Yeah.